Hey there guys, in this video we're going to be going to the three higher realms for a cheaper clear for all missions. We're going to the top one, the hard mode. Uh, the missions are no items, five turns or less, and party of four or less. Um, now this video is not going to be strictly a budget video because it is going to be using the Dazzle card, which was, you know, kind of expensive on the Ricard banner. But um, other than that card, the gear is relatively accessible. <laughs> Um, so if you can't do party of four or less and five turns or less in the same clear, um, you can obviously go with like a five-man team and get the, uh, the five-turn clear and then go back with a four-man team and take it slow. So it's a three-stage fight. This is only the final boss. They're all weak to dark only, but this one is a human fairy. The first boss is a human demon, and the second boss is a human undead. All right, so this is the party we're gonna use. We're gonna be using Bulwark to do Instrument in Peril on turn one. We're gonna be doing Yigni to Dark Amplify, Break the Boss, as well as Dark in Peril. We're gonna use Rivera to give killers to all the races. Rivera is really good here because she does all four of the racial killers, Human, Demon, Undead, and Fairy. And then we're gonna be using Olivera to OTK it on turn one. Now this obviously is gonna require an EX2 Olivera to start with the full LB. But Olivera is available in the Clash of Wills shop. So, you know, here's an option. And I might see what I can do about going back from more like budget style clears later. But for now, this is what we're doing. Okay, so Bulwark is going to just Bulwark's Blair. It's a 30% instrument in peril. Yegni is going to quad. We're going to Floating Shadows to amp the party to dark. Soul Projection to imperil the boss to dark. Seal of Doom to break the boss's defense and spirit. And the last cast doesn't really matter. All we need is those three. All right, Rivera is going to triple. We're going to start with Reverberation to upgrade her skills. Then we're going to do Rhapsody of the Wild for a human killer buff on Olivera. And this one's a demon, so we're going to do Impish Nocturne for demon killer on Olivera. And then Olivera's LB in the shift form should OTK this on turn one. Make sure you start Olivera in the shift form. That way he auto buffs his LB damage. As you can see, LB damage, he auto buffs it if he starts in the shift form. So that's very important. And also he's a tag chainer, so therefore you don't need to worry about um, support chaining. He's like, you know, all in one. And with the magic variance update, um, Olivera is, you know, more useful. Of course, he is also using the Dazzling card, which, as I mentioned, um, is kind of a big deal for him. This might work with his own card, but it would obviously be not as good. Um, so we're going to just reload Bulwark and Yigni, do the same thing. This one's a Human Undead, so we're going to Reverberation, then Human Killer, and then Undead Killer, which is Funeral March on Oliveira. Wait for this to finish. Okay. We're going to do it again. And this should take it out pretty pretty simply. There we go. So we we're at, we're at two, <coughs> two out of four turns, which is why it's a little bit tricky to do like a true ultimate extreme budget run because you don't really have time to set up. Now this one you can take two turns on, but we're probably going to OTK it on turn one. If we don't, going to turn two should be okay. But truth be told, I don't know. But what are we going to do? We're going to use Bulwark to Bulwark's Blair, and we're going to Jaunty Jubilee on Olivera to give him an 85% mitigation. Just in case we don't OTK, he at least survives until turn two and can finish it off on the next turn with his tag skills. And there is no mission to prevent death, so deaths are okay. If the rest of the party dies, we don't really care. So Yigni would do that. Now the final boss is a human fairy, so we're going to Encore. Make sure you always do Reverberation first. Then we're going to Rhapsody for Human Killer, and then Impish Nocturne for Fairy Killer, and we're going to do our LB. And now again, if we don't finish off with the LB, you would quad um, Symphonic Harmony four times as the follow-up next turn. But I'm pretty sure we're going to finish it. We're going to finish it off here. But if not, you know, we've got one turn remaining for our mission. All right, so it's a little bit close there, but as you see. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the boss does on her first turn, um, but like I said, we gave Oliveira 85% mitigation, so um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that would have been fine. 
Oliveira would have been left standing. We were passive provoking on someone else too. Um, so Oliveira did that. We did all missions. Uh, and again, if you can't do it all missions in one go, go back with <coughs> go with a five man team, get it in five turns, and then um, yeah, you get the idea. I'm sorry, I'm I'm out of it right now. Um, anyway, here's the here's the gear we used. So the only thing Bulwark needs is you need the Call of the Wild, his TMR equipped or STMR, and then the Dragon's Brush. If you don't have the Dragon's Brush, you could use the um, you could use Advanced Weaponry. You could use Advanced Weaponry, and you could use something like um, the Pause of Prosperity. If you don't have the Dragon's Brush, that would give you. Um, he needs 30 LB for his Bulwark's Blair. He starts with 15 automatically from Adventuring with Friends. We're getting eight more from Call of the Wild. That's 23. And then we get the other seven from Dragon's Brush if you own it. If you don't, you can get one or five from Pause of Prosperity. And then you can get um, between one and three from Advanced Weaponry, which is uh, a little bit of RNG. But as long as you get a two or higher, that'll still get his LB. And then starting on like the second wave, he should always have his LB. Good to go. And then I geared him past or provoke evasion just in case we didn't OTK the final wave. He would soak some hits before dying, and if he dies, it wouldn't really matter. Yigni is just using some mana reduction and the Obsidian Bracer. I gave him Phoenix Energy because his imperil hurts himself. Not really super important. Uh, but yeah, he was doing the 85% Spirit Break. He was doing a 30% Dark Amp for the party. And he was doing a 130 Dark Imperil for the boss. Uh, Rivera is just using her STMR, um, just using for mana reduction. Uh, all she does is the killers. Make sure you reverberate before the killers each turn, and she does 125% to both killers. And then Oliveira only uses the shift form. Start in the shift form. Um, now this is the part where it's going to be like not so budget, as we are using a banner exclusive card. But um, you know, like I said during that banner, this is exceptionally powerful. It's very very strong and it makes Oliveira deal really good damage. Um, so we've got a instrument build, which we get the Imperil from Bulwark. Um, MP, make sure you keep in mind, Oliveira's shift form scales on MP. Magic does nothing at all for Oliveira's shift form. That's only the base form. Shift form is 100% MP only. So as high as MP as you can get, and then some magical killers. We focused mostly on human killer because all three of them are human. And then the rest of that, we went for um, Fairy Killer. So maxed LB, 275 Human, 125 Demon for the first, 200 Reaper for the second fight, and then Fairy. Only 125 Fairy for the third fight, but it was enough. Okay. And if you can't, um, if that's not enough, you can also add something like Sephiroth, like I said, like Sephiroth to cap every, every wave, and that should give you the damage you need. And then you can then drop Sephiroth and go back for a slower clear. Okay. I'll see what I can do maybe about like an alternate budget run that doesn't use something like the Dazzling Demonist card. But no promises because it's pretty hard to do that in the turn limit using extremely, extremely cheap gear. Anyway, see you in a bit.